Registered Phenomena Code 268 Object Class Alpha Yellow Red Hazard Types Regenerative Mechanical Temporal Tychokinetic Containment Protocols RPC-268 is currently uncontained, following a containment breach on December 10, 2017, and is believed to be in the possession of POI-268-2. As such, recovery of RPC-268 is considered a high priority. In the case of a possible sighting of RPC-268 or POI-268-2 nearest available dispatch center in the event of a confirmed sighting of RPC-268 and or POI-268-2, direct confrontation with POI-268-2 is not permitted without the approval of a Level 4 personnel or higher. Inactive Containment Protocols Containment Protocols RPC-268 is to be stored within a standard security locker in Site-038 and monitored to prevent any unauthorized use. The aforementioned locker is to be guarded by two security personnel at all times. Use for testing necessitates approval by no fewer than two Level 4 or higher personnel. RPC-268 required regular maintenance every two weeks, or more frequently if tested such as removing dust from crevices, wiping surfaces with a damp cloth, and applying appropriate lubricant to all moving parts. Care is to be taken to avoid damage, as RPC-268's rate of regeneration is markedly slow. All uses and results of the anomaly are to be documented appropriately in the provided formats. See Addendum 2 Description RPC-268 is a counterfeit instant camera that approximates Polaroid one-step land camera models produced during the mid-1970s. A noticeable discrepancy of RPC-268 is the noise emitted when a photograph is taken, as opposed to a sound typical of these cameras. This assembly of RPC-268 reveals no unexpected or unusual internal engineering. An audio sample of the aforementioned noise made by RPC-268 is included below. RPC-268 emitted sound. Note the distorted, mechanical, and grinding properties. The primary anomalous property of RPC-268 is activated when RPC-268 is used to photograph a human individual within range of the capture lens. The photographed individual will be the the photographed individual will be depicted as deceased by the developed film of RPC-268, hereafter referred to as RPC-268-1. The manner in which the individual expires varies, and the cause of death is potentially deducible from information within instances. RPC-268-1 instances are believed to be precursory, with no anticipated deaths in the manner depicted successfully prevented by the authority. It is currently unknown whether RPC-268 causes these deaths to occur. The dial on RPC-268's facade has been removed forcefully and is currently in a state of regeneration. The rate of regeneration places this damage immediately prior to its containment and is expected to recover fully in approximately 45 years. No mechanism exists beneath this dial, and it is presumed this lack of detail is due to RPC-268 status as a forgery. Through various tests and circumstances, the Authority has compiled a list of parameters that RPC-268 operates under. Time for death of subjects is not known. There is no change if an individual is photographed numerous times before death, save for the setting. Multiple individuals within an instance of RPC-268-1 will be affected. However, Information regarding their possible means of demise is limited to which parts of their body are captured in the instance, such as RPC-268-1-37A captured the right arm of an individual who was otherwise out of frame. In the developed photograph, the individual's skin featured extensive third-degree burns. This individual was later identified to have died in a house fire. 
individuals who were involved in the deaths of RPC-268-1 subjects, such as the murderer of the subject in RPC-268-1-08C, will not appear in the instance. Taking a picture of a person's name, or another photograph, will not yield an instance of RPC-268-1. RPC-268 has shown no signs of sapience or sentience nor do individuals show any changes to their ACS reality levels. This was initially postulated to explain the inevitability of the deaths depicted in RPC-268-1 instances. Those in possession of RPC-268 are immune to its anomalous properties when taking a self-portrait. Any intervention applied in order to avoid the results observed in RPC-268-1 instances have so far invariably been incorporated into the means of those results. See Addendum 268.1. Any attempts, precognitive or impromptu, to alter or prevent the means of death depicted in RPC-268-1 instances have invariably been met with failure. Discovery RPC-268 was discovered in 1976, when POI-9320 was taken into custody. On his person were hundreds of instant photographs of cadavers, later determined to be instances of RPC-268-1. When RPC-268 was removed from POI-9320, his physical appearance deteriorated over the course of the following weeks, such that the apparent age of POI-9320 became markedly incongruous with his biological age. This effect has not reoccurred despite attempts to recreate it. The significance of this occurrence remains in dispute. Addendum 1 Notable RPC-268-1 Instances RPC-268-1-12A July 11, 1978 The subject was depicted as pruned and waterlogged, suggesting drowning as the cause of death. The subject was tagged and surveilled by authority agents remotely and covertly secured away from proximity to any appreciable body of water. After being successfully deterred from a travel trajectory towards the coast, the subject crashed his vehicle into a fire hydrant. He stepped out of the vehicle and into a sinkhole, likely made as a result of the destruction of the fire hydrant and drowned. RPC-268-1-36A February 6, 1986 During testing, CSD-19302 was depicted as enduring terminal, blunt force trauma to the cranium. The abrasions present suggested a round object, one that left imprints of an engraved pattern, presumed to be industrial in nature. He was taken to remote Camp 150 in the Gobi Desert and fitted with protective gear in order to reduce the likelihood of the depicted death. While outside of his tent, a tortoise shell that had been dropped from a high altitude by an Aquila Crocidus from Golden Eagle, impacted his head. The Eagle presumably mistaken his industrial grade helmet with a rock suitable for shattering the shell. Subject died of sequelae from skull fracture. RPC 268 1 187B, August 10, 1998. Subject was depicted as emaciated with an engorged abdomen, clinically dying from starvation. Authority personnel procured the subject under pretenses of anomalous research and contained her within an alpha white humanoid cell where the subject enacted a hunger strike in protest of her incarceration. When the subject became morbidly malnourished, the Office of Ethics and Review approved directed internal nutrition, which was established. A technique of nutritional delivery that uses a feeding tube inserted into the gastrointestinal tract. The narcotics required to keep the subject sedated for this process caused bile immotility and formed a large bowel obstruction, rendering her gastrointestinal tract non-functional and protruding her abdomen significantly. Internal rupture and death occurred one week later, the body never recuperating from the malnutrition. RPC-268-1-291A October 10, 1999 Researcher Chalmers was killed instantly during testing of RPC-268 when the ceiling of the testing chamber caved in, crushing him. The collapse was later determined to be due to material fatigue. 
Recovered surveillance footage shows the death occurring immediately after Chalmers observes his own RPC-268-1 instance, which was taken by an assistant who survived the event. The instance was recovered and depicted Chalmers as a collection of pumice, blood, and fractured bone. RPC-268-1-494B January 2, 2001 Posthumous investigation revealed that researcher Jeremiah Mott had his photograph taken in an unauthorized, self-administered test of the anomaly. RPCs 1987-1992 1992-1994 and 2001. He destroyed the photograph after, and the performing assistant was unable to view the result, but Mott's personal diary describes his cadaver depicted as strings of viscera and static. Researcher Mott was so disturbed by this that he requested to be anesthetized and reassigned. This was performed at nearby Site-028, where he was re-employed and reassigned to RPC on account of his past pension for dimensional anomalies. On January 2, 2001, researcher Mott uncharacteristically failed to secure a decompression chamber lever after performing routine data collection on RPC despite passing numerous competencies for this and orientation training. Acquaintances reported that Mott's memory was never the same after the amnestization. Mott was partially pulled into the 60cm dimensional orifice and delaminated over the course of several minutes in the process, portions of his internal anatomy being lost into the dimensional anomaly. The caveat that the RPC-268-1 instance might have represented for Mott regarding an assignment such as RPC was presumably lost to him during the anesthetization process. Addendum 2 Selected Test Logs Provided in this addendum is a collection of notable test logs, designed to 1. further clarify the mechanism of RPC-268, 2. determine if RPC-268's effects are causative or simply predictive, and 3. Frustrate the capabilities of RPC-268 if possible. The test and the result are listed below. Several testing proposals were denied due to ethics concerns. Test 1. Currently under audit by the Office of Ethics and Review. Date: August 11, 1976 Testing Design Researcher Oliver Isaac Photographer Researcher Oliver Isaac Photographed individual, CSD-6921, RPC-268-1 instance, unknown, by test design. Hypothesis: If research personnel resist viewing the RPC-268-1 instance, then the depicted death will still occur. Results: CSD-6921 was killed in action on December 9, 1976, by RPC. Additional notes. RPC-268-1 instance was observed retroactively and displayed an image of death that was compatible with the means of exploration. This test confirmed that looking at the RPC-268-1 instance itself does not cause the observed effects. A terrible tragedy to be sure, but we can learn something from this, and not let the horrible death be in vain. This is valuable information, due to the unusual an unmistakable manner in which RPC's victims die. By this, we can remove the previous ambiguity in the means of death and conclude with sufficient reason that the Dash-1 instances are very specific in their prognosis. Researcher Oliver Isaac Test 7 Date August 12, 1977 Testing Design Researcher Oliver Isaac Photographer Researcher Oliver Isaac Photographed Individual CSD-6980 On death row, execution date set for August 12, 1976 RPC-268-1 instance Shown to be a single, low-caliber headshot wound to the back of the head. Hypothesis 
If tied to a chair and given lethal injection, then this will prevent the death shown in RPC-268-1 from happening. Dose of Potassium Chloride, which ceases cardiovascular activity Results, CSD-6980 was given a lethal injection and was pronounced dead ten minutes after. As the site security guard removed his restraints, CSD-6980 lunged with the guard's firearm. The guard evaded CSD-6980 and shot him once in the head out of self-defense. Additional notes, Review of CSD-6980's vital signs at the time of his pronounced death displayed faint ECG activity, which was not noticed at the time. At the time of testing, death was medically defined by lack of activity in the cardiovascular system, and not by the death of the brain, which was established in the early 1980s. For this reason, CSD-6980 was mistakenly pronounced dead prior to actual brain death. Test 12 Date August 21, 1977 Testing Design Researcher Oliver Isaac Photographer Researcher Oliver Isaac Photographed Individual CSD-6990 Formerly Assistant Researcher Benedict Bendrum Found guilty of feeding a subject to RPC in the process of testing RPC-268. RPC-268-1 instance. The cause of death is presumably natural causes via old age. Hypothesis: If the subject is executed by gunshot trauma, then this will alter the cause of death and prevent the death shown in RPC-268-1 from happening. A security guard was ordered to shoot CSD-6990 in the chest several times. Results: Researcher Isaac. Disobeying protocol brandished his own firearm and proceeded to fire six shots, a full magazine, into the mandible and cranium of CSD-6990. The test was discontinued. Miraculously, CSD-6990 did not die from the injuries, but was placed in lifelong acute medical care due to a resulting anoxic brain injury. CSD-6990 expired 40 years later in his sleep. Additional notes. Oliver Isaac is currently under suspicion per internal judicial affairs. He has thus been removed from his position with RPC-268. Oliver Isaac was reassigned to RPC-268 under conditional participation. Test 13 Date September 7, 1977 Testing Design Senior Researcher Barry Stevenson Photographer Research Assistant Oliver Isaac Photographed Individual RPC-218 Hypotheses Anomalies are subject to RPC-268's effect. This hypothesis was not able to be confirmed. Results RPC-218, given its reliable appearance at events of great historical importance, was photographed using RPC-268 at the treaty sightings between Panama and the United States. RPC-268-1 instance featured a blank black photograph. Analysis determines that the chemical film was successfully developed and that the shutter of the camera was open at the time of photography. Further testing on the instance revealed an ACS level approaching zero. The significance of this is uncertain. A message on the posterior side of the instance read, Prepare for unseen circumstances. Additional notes. The RPC-268-1 instance was incinerated by order of the Global Directorate. Test 15 Date November 12, 1977 Testing Design Senior Researcher Barry Stevenson Photographer Research Assistant Oliver Isaac Photographed Individual RPC-686 Hypothesis 1. Anomalies are subject to RPC-268's effect. 2. RPC-686 has a definitive and final death. Result: RPC-268 produced an instance of RPC-268-1, immediately followed by another instance of RPC-268-1, ad infinitum. By the time the experiment was ceased by depletion of film from RPC-268, it had produced over 19 instances of RPC-268-1, each showing RPC-686 dying 
in a plethora of varying circumstances. Additional Notes Hypotheses 1. It's presumed confirmed. Although it is currently unknown whether RPC-268 could successfully produce an RPC-268-1 of RPC-686's final death. Research has been inconclusive in proving whether RPC-686 has a set amount of deaths, or if it is potentially infinite. Test 34 Date November 15, 1993 Testing Design Senior Researcher Molly Holfield Photographer Research Assistant Oliver Isaac Photographed Individual Not Applicable Hypothesis If RPC-268 is used to photograph RPC-268 itself, then the RPC-268-1 instance will depict how RPC-268 becomes inert. Result. Taking a self-portrait through use of a mirror produced no RPC-268-1 instance. Additional Notes RPC-268 does not apply to objects, RPC-268 included. This result, in addition to the animal studies, suggests that RPC-268 only produces an RPC-268-1 instance in the presence of human genetic material. Test 58 Date December 10, 2017 Testing Design Senior Researcher Michael Andrew Photographer Research Assistant Faye Andrews Photographed Individual Research Assistant Oliver Isaac Hypothesis Not applicable The following test was performed as a preliminary POI workup for the detection of anomalous traits in Research Assistant Oliver Isaac, whose seemingly inability to age caught the attention of Authority personnel. Any anomalous traits were hypothesized to be secondary due to prolonged exposure to RPC-268. Result. RPC-268-1 instance featured Research Assistant Oliver Isaac seemingly alive, standing directly centered in a shot and facing the capture lens. Upon photography responsibilities being transferred from former Research Assistant Oliver Isaac, he immediately begins to age, his physique well surpassing his biological age. Additional Notes Oliver Isaac is now POI-268-2 and is to be contained within a humanoid security cell as of December 10, 2017. Test 59 Date December 10, 2017 Test Design Not Applicable Containment Breach Photographer Former Research Assistant, now POI-268-2, Oliver Isaac Photographed Individuals 28 CSDs Senior Researcher Michael Andrew and two site security guards stationed within the testing chamber at the time. Hypothesis Not applicable. Results After gaining access to RPC 268's testing chamber without permission, POI 268 2 took possession of RPC 268 and began producing instances of RPC 268 1 using nearby authority research and security personnel, as well as celled CSD personnel. The flash on the camera was sufficient to stun the unsuspecting personnel, and POI-268-2 escaped the site under guise of its former employment. POI-268-2 remains at large. Additional Notes A handwritten note by POI-268-2 was found at Site-038, Detail below. I know by the time these words are read, my employment at the Authority will be concluded. I will have committed the unthinkable and breached the containment we established out of concern for the public. Through various tests, I have suggested that RPC-268 does not cause the deaths and it only shows us what will inevitably happen, but and a significant source of stress for me, one that I am hell-bent on finding a way to resolve before I die, which I have found a way to prolong. I was the one who damaged RPC-268 and though I didn't expect to wait this long, it will be worth it, because I can simply all the time I ever need. Maybe looking through this camera is like viewing the azure of ocean waves. Whether or not we gaze upon their alluring aesthetic does not change that they will crash upon the shore. But in focusing on their simple rhythm, the world seems to slow. Our time feels well spent, 
are moments bigger, fuller, like seeing the world through the eyes of a child again, who would regard an unexpected day off of school as an infinity of leisure. I once saw this camera as a curse, as if we are but slaves to a totalitarian glimpse of our futures, but now, I see it as a gift and an opportunity. I am like Plato's characters, who freed themselves from glimpsing mere shadows on a wall. I have viewed the coming storm for the Authority and its leadership, and I refuse to let them crash upon us. I will learn to break the determinism of our reality at any cost. I repeat, at any cost. Research, protect, contain. And don't forget, research comes before the other two. Oliver Isaac P.S. I'd recommend the GDs heed their photophobia.